introduce our next and final speaker, Andre Karpathy. And I think people need to look for better ways of training these models so that it's in the loop with itself and it's in Namaskar, what you just witnessed is video chat. This is a Gen AI project where we developed a web app that helps us to chat with any YouTube video. This is a documentation of how we did it in less than 15 days. Before diving deep, here's the application flow for those who won't be with us till the end. We start off with storing the transcript of the YouTube video. We fetch it using an API. Store its response in a text file and pass it to LangChain. LangChain then chunks the transcript. These chunks go into embeddings model, which vectorizes them, that is, convert text into numbers. These vectorized chunks are stored in a vector DB, done with the storing part. This vector database has a retriever object. Here comes the fun part. We now get to prompt a query. This query is sent to the retriever. Retriever first converts the text query into vector then it finds top k similar chunks to the vectorized query. Gives us back those k chunks of the transcript which are similar to query embeddings. Now these retrieved chunks along with our query goes to LLM. A large language model now has a query and its context as input. As usual, it is now able to generate an augmented response based on the context we provided to it. And voila! Malhar, that was a bit overwhelming. Yes, I know. Let's go beyond the flowchart into the timeline of project development. I started the project with looking at the problem statement that our MAM gave us. NPTEL Video Summary Generation. How will we generate summary of a YouTube video? Oh. Uh, we can have transcript of the YouTube video. How will we get that transcript? Oh, uh, there is an API for that. YouTube transcript API. Cool, cool, cool. What will we do with this transcript? Wait a minute. We can combine this with other mini project called Chat with Doc. Okay, Chat with Doc is a rag based chat bot that helps us to chat with any document that we provide. So if we can give this fetched transcript as a document to this rag enabled large language model, then we can easily prompt the LLM to give us a summary based on the transcript. Makes sense. Here's where Sandesh came into picture. I asked him to do the front end for this. He started with HTML, CSS, JavaScript, created a UI as I asked, but was not perfect yet. He tried to do it with Streamlit. Nah, we found another new front-end library called Chainlit, which helped us build a GPT-like chat application very easily. He was able to connect ChatGPT API to this Chainlit application. Nice, things were happening. Meanwhile, I was able to understand the code and logic behind the chat with doc project. Here, I understood the retrieval part of the Chroma DB. Oh, this is connected with ChatGPT. We can use any different large language model here, of course, thanks to LangChain. Filtering out unnecessary code was challenging. Finally, was able to do that. Now let's put YouTube transcript to this rag. Let's also put timestamps along with the transcript. I shocked what it worked. I now had a code that worked exactly as I thought in the beginning. Let's put this in the chain lit Sandesh. First prototype was ready in just a week. 
now the expectations increased we were asked to add new features here is where kulrip stepped in with his front end skills he started with the baseline web app that sandesh created with his pro skills and gaming keyboard strokes he built a mind blowing ui with react and tailwind along with white meanwhile sandesh shared with me that there was a way to connect flask backend to react front end okay i started creating a flask api that involved the backend code after facing many difficulties like how to create an api how to create a python script from the code in the jupyter notebook ah uh, getting a uh, open ai api key is such a pain in the ass. now comes the grand finale how to connect back end flask api to front end react web app it was a night long google meet we all three were on a call to make this connection happen i had created specific routes that enabled the react front end to send http requests after much debugging and playing with the local host ports we did it we slept at 6 am and there was a big smile on my face next day we went to show our application with much enthusiasm to our professor and we got a 404 not found error